So one more time, my name is <laughs> Alena Grigorash. Uh, and uh, yes, uh, I am PhD in history of art and I, I am uh, associate professor of uh, different universities in Moscow, like MPEGU, Rudan, uh, uh, Hesse and um, so on. Uh, and my focus <laughs> of interest is, is uh, um, uh, Judenstil, because uh, my topic is German hi history of art uh, and contemporary art. And yes, I am not only make researches, I'm practicing contemporary art from time to time with different uh, conceptual works. That's, that, that's so, and David, you? Yes, I'm David Bossi. I'm an architect. Uh, I work as official uh, at, um, for public work design and supervision at the municipality of Milan. And uh, I'm... Uh, um, um, I'm focused, my most um, important interests are uh, urban design and uh, landscape and urban design especially, uh, and uh, uh, even uh, um, the relationship between uh, the contemporary design and the history of architecture uh, and uh, with especially reference to the modern and uh, contemporary history of architecture. Uh, so we can uh, start with the presentation. Yes. Um, our presentation is uh, an excursus on the phenomenology of white in contemporary architecture, art and culture, uh, focusing especially on the last decades, but considering the whole context uh, of the history of the 20th century and its cultural background existing in the so-called cultural memory, as it was considered by Jan Hausmann. And uh, we decided to make uh, a trend watching in the fields of cultural studies with a little immersion in the semiotics. Uh, and we structured the material according to the types of temporal and visual arts, starting from the impression given by nature and then uh, going to the human habit, to the um, artificially constructed uh, environment uh, with some uh, cultural practice, uh, uh, such as uh, ritual, uh, traditions and habits today. So the first inspiration about white color in cultural significance uh, and uh, in art practice is nature, flora and fauna, where we can find uh, uh, white color um, as something to emerge and distinguish from the environment and white color as uh, uh, mimetism with the environment. And uh, our cultural uh, and cultural inspiration uh, from white color in nature derives even uh, from the natural white that uh, surprisingly transcend the perceived normality of the sensible world, like in the case of albinism in flora, in fauna, and in people too. And uh, um, from inspiration uh, from nature, it derives uh, most of the use uh, of uh, white uh, in the toponomastic of the environment, uh, for example, white sea, white mountain, white highland, uh, as a description of the landscape, and uh, even in uh, cosmology to express, for example, the white dwarf, the, the small uh, compact stars in the last phase of its evolution, uh, radiating white light with the terminology used since 1922. And why toponymous are related to natural feature, but even to cultural practices of even uncertain origin that can be a mix of these two significance, like in the case of uh, uh, Belarus, of right, white Russia, um, that is a toponymous used since the, um, the 17th century. Uh, but uh, uh, since uh, archaic cultures, uh, almost all over the world, uh, inspiration from white in nature is uh, the origin of a wide use of white material for the first artistic production. The natural figures of these archaical uh, traditions were made with white clay, white stone, uh, ivory, and the use of white material in the first archaic art expression for ritual and simulacrum of the divinity can be considered a first expression of idealization of white, or in other words, a use of white to idealize the artwork from the, um, the, the, the object of their sensible world, uh, from that uh, is, uh, can be considered a, a copy. Uh, and white color in art, design, and architecture uh, can be considered firstly associated with the myth of ideal white. 
uh, that's the myth of the idealization of uh, white antiquity that has the archaic origin that we have seen, uh, but it is since the Renaissance till the modern age connected to the misinterpretation of the ancient architecture and sculpture made of an uncolored white marble, clearly expressed by Winkelmann theories uh, that influenced the older revival of classicism, even after it was discovered that, that Hellenic sculpture in reality were colored. And, uh, um, but this myth of either white is not due to a simple aesthetical formal association to the concept of beauty with the supposed classical whiteness. Uh, as we have seen, either white myth as an order origin. Is, it is related to the myth of the white goddess that is present in many ancient uh, um, mythologies uh, and religions. And it is based on the fact that white is total light, poor emanation of light, uh, generate, from that is generating the colored world. And it can be considered that white is an expression of the ideal world, that from that it's generating the perceptible world. Uh, and the idealization of white, uh, of the absence uh, of chromatic colors, uh, as an expression of poor form, poor idea, against the sensuality of the colors of the immanent world, is therefore a central theme of the Western aesthetics, with the debate of disegno versus colore, imagination versus sensuality, idealization versus perception, chromophobia versus chromophilia. And white means in Western aesthetics, therefore, an expression of poor form, a poor idea. And for example, white as poor form is clear in the poor white added stone in the restoration of the temple of Athena Nike in the Acropolis of Athens, in the last restoration of the, um, 2010, uh, in which the, this um, added element are distinguishing from the color of the original marble that is not real white, but is uh, something different. So white element, white added element to express the poor form against the real color of the materiality of the original element. But white in architecture remind even to the vernacular white. That's the white characterizing urban landscape in almost all the Mediterranean countries that was praised by Le Corbusier in its Voyage en Orient, and that's now considered often, a, in some cases, a brand landscape. But the coat of white without ornaments is typical of rural architecture even of many other countries. And in vernacular white architecture, we find many features that later influenced the, the modernist architectural interpretation of white. First of all, the functional white for heating control, for maximizing solar reflection, and for simply protecting the construction material with the whitewash. The hygienical white is whitewash as antibacterial, and the concept of novelty, because whitewash is something that must be renewed, must be always new to remain white. And freshly painted whitewash, it's so a symbol of novelty, of renewing for purification, and it's connected to, with the idea of purity. So both the either white and the vernacular white are the fundamental of white color of modernism. Since the architecture of the pioneer of the modern movement, the white walls are substituting the ornaments of the previous architectural language like white coats uh, substituting uh, the heavy dresses of the stories. Uh, one of the first examples uh, of uh, this uh, use of uh, aesthetic of white walls in antithesis with traditional ornaments is the house for an art lover of Macintosh in 1901 in Glasgow, but where we can find one of the first modernist expression of purism of the architectural form emphasized by the white plaster is in loose architectures such as in Villa Steiner in, in Vienna. And if we consider the urban planning vision of these years, we can notice uh, that even in Tony Garnier's visions of La Cité Industrielle, white color is used often to express the architecture of the industrial city of the future. So the imaging of, uh, the, of, of, uh, of, of the city of the future is clearly expressed by the use of white color. 
And uh, considering the architecture of the master of the modern movement, Wise was uh, especially praised by Le Corbusier in his books and articles. Um, L'Art Decorative of Jordui, the, the text especially about La Loi de Litolaine, and uh, in uh, White, When the Cathedral Were White, especially. And Whitewash uh, um, dresses uh, the white villas uh, of Le Corbusier, uh, and uh, uh, the same as almost all the plastered wall of rationalist uh, architecture. In Weissen of Siedlung in Stuttgart, uh, flat roof and white walls uh, are dominant in the imaging of the district. And even if in reality, not all the buildings were totally white, and there, were, there was the evident exception of Bruno Taut's colorful house, but even other buildings were not real white, but have uh, light colors, black and white pictures of the wheat district internationally sprawled the idea of white as color of the international modern movement. And so we can say that uh, the main idea is that when it's not transparent and it doesn't face the material construction, architecture of the modern movement is mainly white. That doesn't mean it's necessarily a total absence of chromatism, presence of color in Le Corbusier's house is an evidence of it, but a predominance of white plaster as a counterbalance of single defined chromatic element or as counterbalance of material surface in concrete, in clinker, or in stone. Modernist white is a clear expression of purism of the form, poor form modeled by light. It's clear the sentence by Le Corbusier, architecture is the learned game, correct and magnificent of forms assembled in the light. And it's also related to the concept of novelty, because whitewash must be renewed, remarking the value of permanent novelty of modernism and the concept of functional white becoming an, even an expression of functionalism of the modern age. And even to the concept of hygienical white that is intended here also as hygiene of the view. And white color remain a constant feature in post-war international style and in contemporary architecture. White purism is facilitated especially by the so-called the white architects such as Richard Mayer, whose architecture aims to be an expression of a sort of classicism or the contemporaneity and is therefore dressed by either white, made by uh, white walls, white structures and transparencies, allowing visual permeability between exterior and interior and penetration of light inside. One of the clearest model of this concept can be considered the uh, Farnsworth House uh, um, by Miss Van der Rohe uh, that is made uh, by uh, white steel structure and glazed transparencies as uh, main features of this architecture. And uh, if we consider the, the, the strict contemporaneity of the last decade, we can see that white as total light, black as absence of light, and transparency as uh, transmission of light uh, can be the synthesis of the surfaces of most of contemporary architecture. Um, for example, in the sculptural dynamical architectural uh, um, buildings uh, designed by Zaha Hadid, in which uh, there is rarely a use uh, of uh, material chromatics colors. Sometimes yes, but it's something weird. And the play of white and transparency characterize even, for example, the architectural skin by, of the Sana's project of architectures. Like, for example, we can see uh, the New Art Museum in New York City. And making an example of a structural formalism, uh, Santiago Calatrava's architecture are reduced to poor structures that are white skeleton with the interior closed by transparent glass glazed skin. So architecture reduced to a poor structure and these structures is white. These are three uh, elements. Of course, there are um, three examples. Of course, there are others, but uh, just to um, express what can be white uh, in the um, white, uh, um, classical white of the modernism in the contemporaneity. 
But uh, um, if white walls characterize uh, um, the plastered walls in the great uh, um, uh, part of contemporary architecture, where we can find the clearest expression of white purism is uh, in the works of uh, the contemporary Portuguese architects, such as Alvaro Siz, Campo Baez, Aires Mateus. And their work can be considered a sort of total white minimalism, where themes of transparency and structural evidences are secondary and architecture is a poor white shape modeled by light. Besides that this uh, predominance of white as color of plastered walls in contemporary architecture, we can observe um, in the last part of 20th century and uh, in the last decades, uh, trends uh, to live beyond the total white minimalism, bringing out the architecture with an exalted use of color. In the last decades, in especially, we can observe three trends that follow each other. The firstly, a rediscovery of chromatism, clear expression are the architectures by Sauerbruch Hatton, for example. Then a new glam trend, can, we can consider with this name, that is a sort of precious minimalism that we can see, for example, in Fondazione Prada in Milan by Rancoulas and Oma. And finally, uh, finally, the main color trend of the last year that can be called the emotional tech, a, mo a use of modern light technology, especially LEDs and projectors, to emotionally characterize the space. So emotional tech colorizes and decorates the interior and the exterior with the lights. And the last trends uh, and the, the actual trend uh, seems to remain uh, this in the use of um, color in architecture. So the use of color with light. And, uh, but what uh, uh, we can find in, the in this last new trend uh, is that uh, if colorizing happen with lighting technologies, objects are poor form and white surface become perfect screen to maximize the lighting effect. Um, so the white walls remain uh, the perfect, um, the perfect uh, um, surfaces to uh, make this uh, um, emotional technology uh, with this lighting effect. And it's interesting in this uh, regard, the um, installation means missing materiali materiality uh, from uh, uh, Anna and Eugenie Bach in Barcelona, who covered the materiality of Miss van der Rohe's pavilion with white panels, reducing it to a poor form modeled by light. So the building, the Sim a symbolic building, uh, a reconstruction of a symbolic building of the modern movement uh, is reduced to a poor, poor form um, modeled by light. Like in the modernism, the concept of poor form in total light continued to associate uh, white with transparency. And that now is allowing not only effect of the sunlight indoors, but even uh, uh, effects of the inner light on the outer facades. And uh, um, even in the actual uh, um, situation during the, the actual pandemic crisis, uh, the use of um, transparent uh, screens uh, protecting uh, but uh, allowing visual and light permeability become always more important. And so this association between white and transparency in the concept of total light become, uh, seems to be confirmed and to become always more important. So beside this new poor white architecture that is often an expression of aesthetical purism or in other words, aestheticism of the poor form, there is an old white architecture that remains even in the contemporaneity, where white has a strong symbolic significance related to the moral, religious and political virtues associated with this color. Being white a symbol of honesty, nobility, truth, purity, Government buildings and places of political power are often white, and white is often a, a symbol of political power. The most emblematic expression of this is, of course, the American White House that devotes its color to the aesthetics of the ideal white in the American neoclassicism, but it expressed, together with the other government building in Washington, the clear expression of white as color representative of the virtues related to political power. 
It is interesting how we can uh, observe this uh, symbolic interpretation uh, of white even in the Russian White House in Moscow, designed by Chechulin and built in 18, uh, 1981 um, to uh, hold the Supreme Soviet of Russia and uh, now uh, used as the government uh, house of the Russian Federation. But one of the virtues uh, um, mainly associated uh, with white in different cultures is religious purity. Use of white plaster or of white stone for church architecture, even if they are not a local construction material, is frequent in many historical traditions. Just as an example, we can observe how the Russian medieval church and monasteries were mainly white. We show the uh, example of the Ascension Church of Kolomensky. Uh, and uh, um, we can see that in the modern movement, the use of white to symbolize religious purity in church design gave origin to interesting architectural experimental research with white plaster and light. In Le Corbusier's Notre Dame de Haute and Rochamp, the white plastered walls under the heavy brutalist shell of the concrete roof enhance the, uh, on the exteriors the soft place of light and shadows of sunlight in the landscape, while it exhales uh, in the interior, in the dark interior, the intense light coming from the colored small windows and from the towers. In Alvar Alto's church in Riola, a total white concrete interior sprawls the light coming from the skylight shields. And uh, uh, in the minimalist church uh, uh, designed by, in the 50s uh, by the Italian architects Mangiarotti and Morassutti um, in Baranzate near Milan, facades made by glazed panels with white polystyrene inside create a white illuminating walls, uh, making a, a white inner atmosphere with natural light during daylight and transforming the building into a, a sort of lantern and a, a, a lantern in the city during the night. But it's emblematic how um, this concept of uh, uh, purity and expression of purity with white color is uh, um, something that uh, unifies different cultures and different religions. And it's emblematic of three central important temples built in the last decades uh, of different religions and with different architectural languages having common white color. White is Mayor's Jubilee Church in Rome, in which the material evidence, that is a white concrete, uh, supposedly created uh, from this project by Ita Cementi, can be associated with whiteness. Um, white is the color of Abu Dhabi White Mosque, one of the last uh, um, largest and important uh, um, architecture of Islam. And white is the lotus temple in Delhi, that is a Baha'i temple, uh, whose lotus flower is uh, 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 lotus flower shape uh, is another symbol of purity. And so, right, to express purity in, in this um, other building. The symbol of peace and war, the dove, dates back to Christianity as an expression of the divine spirit in the Trinity. Picasso popularized the symbol in the 20th century, uh, firmly connecting it with a peaceful life. Today, we continue these associations in some wedding ceremonies with the white doves, which are realized by new weds as a symbol of peace and love. Besides hidden religious meanings of white, there are even secular social mixed with the political ones. It's also important for flag symbolism. The white, the white flag dating back to the history of piracy today means non-aggression, the desire to ask for a truce. Therefore, Marina Abramovich's criticism of the American Yugoslav conflict takes place through the symbols of the old fashioned knightly nobility. The hero is noticeable, he can afford the luxury of becoming a turgid and victim without attacking, but in a Christian way, uh, accept the aggression on himself. The Russian Civil War. Uh, 
headbands dressed by white guards symbolic disagreement with the Soviet regime. Not only Marines, like nowadays, white ribbons symbolize disagreement with the public policy. Well, uh, in whole world today, white means even a social position. White color is the identification of the class of professional, desk, managerial, and administrative workers. As early in the 90s, 90, mm, 39, Sutherland defined white collar crime as a non-violent corporate crime, crime committed by businesses and uh, government officials. In 21st century, the white collar manager has more intention in movies and TV series. Visiting office today and the social status of a banker, lawyer, minister, rector oblige us to wear a white shirt, which will not get dirty from the hard intellectual labor. If a white shirt is not longer mandatory for officer, officer style, then elements of a mandatory uniform penetrate into everyday life and work's routine. Today, white sneakers borrowed from aesthetic uniform, athletic uniforms are a symbol of creativity and work that, met, uh, that may not necessarily take place in the office. We are considered to be living in a post-40 society with a creative economy, where white collars are replaced by casual style outdoors and more and more corporate crimes are committed in cyberspace. In history of reality, first white sneakers were created by Bruce uh, Krieger in 1982 and became associated with the basketball shoes. Then, with a cult of health and visiting gym, they are replaced from sport zone to the relaxing daily blogger and celebrity's life, influencing on fashion designers like Armani, etc. In the rest of white symbolism in the uniform is associated with physical effort. In tennis, the white uniform became popular after Maud Watson's victory at Wimbledon in 1884, when women's tennis became power, active in movement. Four corsets, long hands got in the way. And Sweet was best uh, concealed by light colored clothing. The men's gymnastics, white tricot, are especially popular and intersect with the idea of underwear, with the improvement in the production of fabrics, having managed to become comfortable, elastic, and embark, thanks to which it lost uh, its original stripes in the early 20th century. The same logic of visualization is inherited in sport fencing. The so-called white duels uh, first took place under the supervision of four witnesses, and then they began to use a white uniform and red paint of the tip of a sword uh, of uh, rapier, which was clearly visible as an injection mark on a white uniform. A red mug appeared, which uh, the judge watches after the, the fight. It was cycled uh, with a dark pencil to show that it had already been counted. Red dye is not easy to remove, which eliminates the possibility of fraud. The only way to remove it is to use a certain uh, acids, such as uh, vinegar, to the white color, which does not lose the intensity of the pain during chemical uh, processing was visual and persistent. The absence of dirt is evident in the medical form, which borrowed wide since 19th century. At the beginning of the 20th century, with the great progress of surgery and hygiene in the world wars, it becomes symbol of medical authority. Also, the medical white collar acquires associations with biological protection in special suits. The uh, disinfection is even more aggressive than the doctor's uh, surgical gown, so the white collar remains resistant uh, to carbolic acid processing. These anti plug suits with the small colored stripes are used today in the COVID area. Era. Also, individual uh, protection details uh, such as masks with uh, biosecurity on the face, if it be two or three, indicate a um, readiness to meet with an infected place. On the contrary, chemical protection suites, uh, if we recall the Chernobyl disaster in the 20th century, may not be wide due to the particular difficulty to disposal and the impossibility to reuse. 
Finally, white in uniforms has been associated with the space since the 1960s. His conquests affects the fashion and image of the hero in general. This is a um, repetition of white color like by Audrey Hepburn and design of parts of the space suite such as the lunar boots or winter coat. Today, there are a uh, retrofuturistic fashion trend in the early 2000s based on the patterning synthetic winter riser in Great Britain in 1941 and experiments with materials for shoes by Technica Group of Giavera del Montello in Italy made in early 1970s. Well, but what about the users? Human body for us is an impression of exterior of skin like symbol of health, social status, etc. For example, white skin is not only albinism, but even vitiligo like by Michael Jackson, son, sign of the rare genetic disease. A symbol of health today, if we talk about Asia, is the effect of natural glowing white skin, which is promised by Korean cosmetics. As in ancient Egypt, uh, white, cl uh, white clear skin in regions with an aggressive sun is a symbol of the um, idleness of the highest strata of society, which can afford not to engage in physical labor. On the other hand, the white makeup effect is a blur of personality that is used in Butu, the modern Japanese experimental dance. Its maximum artificiality of the highest expression of abstraction. To hide age, wrinkles and skin imperfections, a makeup with a whitewash containing toxic lead is uh, designed. In Europe, in particular in France, it became especially popular with the development of court etiquette in the 18th century. The artificiality of the face with a spectacular transparent skin through which blue veins are visible, all these separated the nobles from the ordinary peasants, those skin acquired a tan in the summer and a blush from the cold in winter. And today, when we create effect of perfect skin, the unwittingly inherited the etiquette and cultural practice of the leisure class, who has the time and resources to prepare his look to go out. With the technical progress, our life can be rest more and more at home. Last trend in fashion is about turn towards to be natural thanks to increasingly domestic lifestyle. Older models appeared in fashion, like by Oldushka Andesi in Russia, May Mask, etc. Thanks to improving the quality of life and expectancy, Carmen de Verificio, or 99 years old designer Eris Apfel, are now legendary celebrities. What is associated with the concept of clearness? often degenerating even in a racist tourism, which is why the brand Off-White deals with that gray zone between street culture and high fashion world. American microtrends or the opinion of Mark Penn in the marriage market show a new norm, at least three marriages per life. This leads to the need of a variety of outfits for each new ceremony. White, a symbol of innocence is no longer as important as the reusability of an outfit, which is why we see more and more light-colored, non-white wedding dresses easily to reusable. Nowadays, white symbolizes even Tumblr Rasa as the beginning of new life. It's emblematic the total white empty cover of April issue of Wagatalia, edited and published in the head of pandemic health emergency. White means hope for their future, as it uh, explicited in covers of Walk, Harper's Bazaar, and etc. In last months, a white fashion is in dressing seems to confirm this trend. White costume seems to be the sign of relaxing, not dangerous ambience. White is associated not only with visual arts, but also temporary ones. One of them uh, is the art of writing. The writing techniques themselves may contain secrets. 
Very often with a uh, widespread use of paper, this is the white on white effect. The text manifests itself only through the effects of physical or chemical experiments, a change of temperature or a special developer substance. Giovanni Battista della Porta is uh, credited with a first recipe for a syn uh, sympathetic ink derived from alum and vinegar, as well as the first book on secret writing and invisible inks, Magia Naturalis. So, Invisible ink is invented for secrecy and intimacy for private and political purposes. So white paper and, for example, white milk are examples of confidentiality and secret knowledge. Today, this tradition lives on in presentations where a um, disgruntled manager can write a curse about his boss on white on white. On this slide, for, for, for the sake of experiment, the word white is also written. Of course, uh, in, in the message white on white, of course, the manifestation as a special effect reminds us uh, of photography from the early 20th century, but still is the use of white paper that is most often found in such cases as the most uh, characteristic material. But, of course, more often than not, white becomes the term in, to which poetry and prose are devoted. Among the poems, we can recall the artist Kandinsky, who developed the theory of color science. He wrote, white jump after white jump, and behind this white leaf, there is again a white leaf, and this white leaf, there is a white leaf, in every white jump, there is a white jump. It's bad that you don't see the muddy, it sits in the muddy. Uh, <laughs> there is a where it all starts. Anna Akhmatova, a poetess of the Silver Age, has uh, titles of poems, White Flock, White Poem, White Nights, and so on. Another repre representative Russian poet of the Silver Age, Boris Bugayev, takes the pseudonym Andrei Belly, that is, Andrew White, in order to hide his passion for poetry from his father, mathematics. Perhaps this is due to the expression in Russian, white and fluff, that means innocence. Daniel Harms is, uh, in his absurd verses uh, of the Abirud movement, has the verse White Sheep, 1929, where a white sheep waves a white hand. Natalia Zlidneva interprets the abundance of white in the tomb of tuning symbols, a blank slate in the life of Russian poets and artists at the beginning of 20th century. But since the 19th century, in Russian poetry, stylizations like Shakespeare and antiquity are especially popular. Poets Vasily Zhukovsky and Alexander Pushkin abandon rhythm and use only other uh, type of stills in poetry. This technique is given to the Russian tomb blank verse, uh, which is a literal transla translation of the French expression of vers blanc. It, in turn, is an um, imprecise tracing of the English Copsin concept of blank verse, which translates as empty verse. This technique in Russia includes poetry by Christian theologians of the 17th century, in particular uh, the linguist Meleti Smatitsky. However, such works gained interest in Russia only at the end of the 18th century, and popularity came with the Romanticism and Pushkin. In the 20th century, white appears in prose. This is a play, The White Disease, written by Czech novelist Karol Čapek in 1937 about form of leprosy, is a selectively killing of people older than 45 under a fascist government that starts a war. The vaccine was invented by a doctor who gives it uh, free only to the poor and from the rich and the head of state, who also fell ill, demands uh, an end uh, to the war. It was adopted as the film Skeleton on Horseback by Hugo Haas. In 1966, in the USSR, Vladimir Dudinsev also criticized the political totalitarian system in the novel White Clothes, 
about the life and work of biologists who are fighting against the pseudoscience uh, and careerism of their bosses. One of the ideas is good is suffering because the desire to do a good deed arises uh, the side of the suffering of another person. The title of the novel goes back to the um, biblical quotation, these clothed in, uh, clothed in white robes, who are they and where did they come from? They came from great tribulation. For doing so, <laughs> disinterested scientists are the owners of white robes and clean souls. Another example of temporary art, music, also uses white as a little as a title of term. For example, an English Gothic rock band Bauhaus expresses portrait the white idealism, go away white. However, in, symphoni in symphonic music, white can also be a formal device. Czech Georg Pelecis writes Concertino Bianco only on white piano keys in 1983. Two years ago, a ballad was staged to his music at the Mariinsky Theater in St. Petersburg. White is used quite often in ballad. There are the famous white tutus in the swan lake, is a symbol of the ancient classics in radical experiments with the dance and music by Stravinsky and Balanchin in the Apollo Mosegat Ballet. There are also ritual clothes used for experiments uh, in sacral dances of the philosopher George um, Gurdjieff that encourage spiritual search since the 1920s. Even today, it's used in art therapy. White esteem of physical and spiritual liberation appears in the trilogy of the film Three Colors. White is 1944, um, 1994 French Polish comedy drama film directed by Krzysztof uh, Kislowski. White is the second in the Three Colors trilogy themed on the French revolutionary ideals, falling blue and preceding red, in which white is about equality. In Russia, white appears in the Soviet comedy, comedy the white sun of the desert, as a symbol of the military's overcoming the desert, who finds himself in the paradise eastern life of the of an oasis with black cover and beauties. In this case, white is a medium between an exhausted hero and his dream. Consequent white in performances and films involves even the environment and the public. An example is the Festival of White Nights in St. Petersburg. The nature of the Baltic in summer makes the night light, which allows you to have fun all night long. Therefore, since the 1990s, concerts have been held here every year, and it's recommended that you wear white clothes. In Italy, since 2012, white dinners have been held, inheriting the ancient tradition of the citizens to lead an active social life, dating back to the tradition of visiting forums. The idea is to create a collective performance to unite the society placed in a specific historical environment of the city. White symbolizes elegance, aesthetics, ethics, ecology, and education for event organizers. So white is used here as the most festive color, a symbol of order and maximum photogenicity. The surroundings of these festivals can be related to the interior and exterior spaces. For environmental design in the interior in the 20th century, the idea of a white cube is gaining special popularity. The third place for this is the art institution as a public space open to all. Step by step, Alfred Barr and other curators of the 20th century began to make special space for new art. So the white cube becomes an ideal neutral space. This association of the white cube with the contemporary art will last for almost the entire 20th century, as it was researched by Brian O'Doherty. 
and only recently as one of the options for fighting consumerism, Curator has also turned to the concept of site-specific as a place for great communications, participating art. On the other hand, cognition of the world, world through uh, art leads curators to radically new places in nature and space. This is becoming the Antarctic, where you can also make site-specific projects than presenting the documentation and the works. So nowadays we can see that up to the end of white cube popularity, white has ostracism in new researches about the history of color and new contemporary art practice. When we see uh, white as part of the environment, we need to understand that we are seeing shades. Neutral white might be slightly ivory, yellow, bluish, or peachy. Neutrals can be used in decor uh, in two basic ways, either such as soft neutral only, quiet look, or as background colors for dramatic accents. In interior design, the white environment today, thanks to advertising for chemical disinfectants, is associated with the three zones, the kitchen, the bath, and the bedroom. In the kitchen, due to the development of uh, the popularity of the use of dishwashes, white dishes are often used without decor, which can be destroyed. Dirt is best visible on white surface, which is why ornaments are leaving the design of plumbing in the bus. Finally, the bedroom uses clean white sheets, a symbol of hygiene, and white besides lamps, a symbol of dream space and stars. A separate topic is electric white color, which changes our perception of full-fledged real darkness today due to its almost complete absence in cities. If the rest of the private space is also made out in total white, it creates the effect of minimalism. This idea so clear represented in the last Paris private apartment of Karl Lagerfeld is no longer actual as interior design after his death. The increase in home uh, filming and the representation of them in a digital environment has shown that white backgrounds are dazzling on the screen. Therefore, more demonstrative warm neutral shades are gradually replacing white. On the example of the car market and home video, gray and beige have moved from the second place after white to the first in Europe and Russia. But the dominant position of white still exists in our cultural memory. Even now, black and white, thanks to photo and cinema, is so popular like in the beginning of the 20th century. When it begins, a new color trend is interesting how this color is usually described as a new white. Example, this jello is a new white. Well, Finally, the art wanted to be a very special thing in the discourse of the ambient and daily life. Since the 19th century is popular, the idea of art for art's sake. It reflects in art history with some white coloring in Impressionist painting with a feminine beauty by Whistler and Morisot. Also, an art magazine in France, in which artists from the Navi group participate, called White Pages, La Revue Blanche, on which manifestos are written on the new role of art, which can change the world for the better as a new form of religion. Thus, white becomes synonyms of aestheticism, independent beauty. The dream of the symbolists about transforming the world for the better is continued by the avant-garde artists. And in, very and in every decade of the 20th century, you can find works associated with the white. Thus, it becomes formally a universal color in art. Although Kandinsky and Filonov do not use only white in their paintings, they devote names to him as the main theme. In figurative compositions, the technique uh, of white on white creates a special impression of a reflection of reality, a fairy tale. This is Dali's surrealism and Belenitsky Birula's social realism and the metamo and uh, the metamodernism of Mishirikov and Rausch and Buravlov hyperrealism. 
If we talk about figurative art, then sculpture is closest to anthropomorphic thinking. In the 20th century, the image of mannequin without a face and name appears. It is presley on the opposition of personality and typicality that both Siegel and Beecroft ironicize, working with a term of corporeality in sculpture and photography. In contemporary sculpture, the forms themselves can change. This is how the effect of movement frozen in time appears in sculpture, and the absence of details and shadows activate our fantasies and associations that fill the space of the tabula rasa. But equally, if not more, and non-figurative art turns to white. If we consider white in modern art, we remember visions of Malevich as a symbol of new life in a cosmic space. His architectons, houses without windows and doors, top and bottom, have no color, as they express absolute novelty and otherness. There is also a funny theory by the artist Leonid Tishkov about the influence in Malevich's childhood of an unconscious love of, for white raffinate sugar cubes due to the work of his father in a sugar factory. So Mary Martin is interested in the maximum abstraction of physical phenomena such as movement, devoid of narrative. Miranda's metaphysical still lives show everyday life as a routine and monotony. The maestri of the artist's palette shows us the quiet beauty of simplicity. And uh, from metaphysics, there is an absolute stop of time, the absence of any action. The Russian nonconformist painter Vladimir Weisberg, on the other hand, thinks how to express harmony through light, making a composition of things a la saison of simple geometric shapes, references to historical time, these columns, banners, and present white table cover. The search for the idea is the monochromic balance among the rim of luminous white things and space pauses between them. The white three, the, sorry, the white free abyss of Malevich's interpretation of the inability to calculate the proportions, multiplicity, and other material aspects in the picture. The strong influence of Malevich is um, expressed is experienced by the Russian nonconformist uh, Edward Steinberg, who emphasizes uh, the geometric plans, planes with a wide anti-gravitational medium. For Pete Mondrian, who also uses white as an aid to geometric compositions, it becomes the basis for expressing perfect balance in neoplasticism. For postmodernists, white becomes the ideal way to transform the boundaries of both old art and modernism. Manzoni abandons color and painting on canvas in order to convey the transparency of the canvas, how light penetrates the surface and changes it, depriving it of boundaries and depth. For the Russian artist Valeria Arlov, the flatness of the paper sheet, on the contrary, acquires texture, tactility, and relief created by deformation of the paper and the play of light and shadow. If Manzoni hints conceptually at light, Orlov uses its physical qualities. Finally, Robert Rosenberg has erased the Kooning's drawings in 1953. All these techniques of working with the form as well as artistic acts raise a protest again against the nature of art in creating conceptual anti-artistic objects. Flavin, minimalism, moves away from humanistic sensibility and handicraft, creating an effect of factory art. Juxtaposition of machine and natural labor Smithson's use in installation with mirrors and sand. Finally, on the contrary, for public space and opt optional artistic sensibility, Christo Forge, the Reichstag, a symbol of not easy political German history in this 20th century. The same effect 
of a new image in the usual uses, artists, uh, uses artist Pasha 183 walking with snow, allowing uh, the unemotional pedestrian to melt in surprise at the side of the block is one of Eliasson's goals in an environment with the blocks of ice from Greenland. They literally comes out through our bodies, said the artist. They are better known than perceptive, and it's a huge surprise to see it on the streets of London. To make the picture of white more complete, remember the jokes where this color is used. I recall the costume of the girls from uh, the sheet for Halloween and the clothes of um, Ku Klux Klan, which is associated with a struggle for social equality, tragic for America. Today, this topic is continued by, by memes on the internet about the color of the bones of the human skeleton with different skin colors, radicalized racism and eugenics. On the other hand, in the 19th century, the satirical artist Alphonse Allais creates a conceptual work about nothing, in which white should be compl uh, complemented by our imaginations of fragile girls. Finally, white is beautiful, so the very joke about the self sufficiency of white, which is better not to violate anything. And as a conclusion, we summarize these different functions of white today in different um, communication practice uh, with different areas of meanings of white, like to, cre to clear, to moralize, to respect, or to universalize, to abstract, or to be intellectual and creative, to identify the social set, uh, status, etc. So we see that these functions, these meanings are absolutely different and that's why it's so difficult to uh, say about white uh, something in only one way. We see that uh, interpretations of white and phenomenology of white is very, very various. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I, Thank you so much. I, I don't want to say something now. First one to hear the students' uh, questions. Yes, yes. Oh, I'm <laughs> oh, so surprised about the bandwidth, how you looked at white, and it must have, it must have been ages to get that lecture together so. for years. OK, so the platform is your for all of you students so who wants who has any questions or feedbacks or feedbacks yeah or personal so, interpretations i guess uh one question i would have for you is do you um notice kind of any new trends emerging about the usage of white and do you think that these different symbolisms for white will continue um, to evolve as society also evolves or do you think these core values of kind of purity and cleanliness and things that started um, with the beginning of symbolism of white will continue into uh, future decades? What do you think? Yes. <laughs> Ah, okay, so uh, I think uh, that this is cliche are increasingly huge and uh, we see it uh, even in different discussions with our colleagues when we talked about new trends and new various uh, interpretations of white there are, the reaction is the same so white is always purity or white is always total in the formal experiments or white is not transparency etc etc and that's why because we are very habituated to this cliche and um, our backgrounds in reality is very um, connected to ethics and uh, this 
the religious way of thinking, religious way of, uh, um, of talking. I think with this practice and impression of language uh, practice and so on, we still have uh, these meeting, meanings uh, for, all, for long, long times. It's very difficult to change um, uh, this cliche about white uh, on, my, on my mind. I would like to add one thing to Sarah, Chris. So Sarah, in terms of cleanliness, if you think of the 90s or so, a lot of dishwash powder, uh, dishwash soap, like Palmoli yeah. or Ajax, they were all green, you know, like as the more aggressive the color, the more clean it looked. And now with the organic movement of the food, it mm -hmm. has changed completely the color of our dish soaps. I mean, there's still palm leaf, on, palm leaf on the market, but you don't see that so much anymore. Good idea. Yeah, exactly. It's much more neutral because it seems uh, to be much more natural. In reality, absolutely not so. Erica? I was just going to say um, the idea of cleanliness, it made me think of like how Lysol wipes, they're white. And then we have like a bathroom spray that sprays on blue. And then when it turns white, it's clean and you can like wipe it off. And so there are a lot of things like that, that I can now think of that before I hadn't really associated the color white with cleanliness, but I think subconsciously I always did. And so it's interesting because I can't see like Lysol or any other cleaning brands trying to move in a different direction because I think people just associate white with being clean. So I think if you tried to put out like a wipe that was like green or blue, I think people would have a lot of problems with that and it wouldn't sell as well. So it's just really interesting to think about. Yes, exactly. Uh, just a sec. There is a, wonderful, uh, there is a wonderful book about history of design in which is very good research how white is very connected to this victim not to be clear. Not something like medical research about uh, all these uh, hygienic things and so on. No, it was very, very connected to this sense of, of, of something. Um, if if, I, if uh, I, I don't do, if I'm not white, if I don't use white, I'm not clean with uh, these um, difficult impressions uh, of a little bit in a Freud associations and so, uh, that is very connected to uh, other things about what we haven't talked about neurosis. Why, uh, neurosis about why. It's, it's, it's something like very difficult to research, but even interesting. Just a sec, I forgot the name, but I, I just um, make, make a search of it. So uh, I saw all the other questions, other hands. Laurel, you're muted. Mm -hmm. um, I thought it was interesting when you were talking about um, like exteriors and interiors, um, kind of the trends using white. It was interesting to me that like the more modern trend, like the emerging idea of like changing modernism from white to then almost like complete chromatism with all of these colors all at once. And then with interiors, it was almost like now the trend is to slightly shift white, to alter it slightly, to become more neutral, to be off white rather than like completely change it. I was wondering if maybe there might be, I don't know, a, a, a more of a, a reason for the difference between the the reaction sort of to exteriors versus interiors for changing trends? Uh, the, yes, the, <clears throat> um, it's something about the, the trends about the cycle of colors. And uh, um, we can find that, uh, of course, there is uh, a, um, a trend to make the interiors more uh, neutral and uh, more uh, um, uh, with uh, um, with um, gray colors or neutral colors that are not total white to avoid uh, the total white look that uh, uh, there are in some uh, um, particular interiors, uh, like in the example that we have seen of the apartment of Karl Lagerfeld, that can be uh, too much uh, um, uh, heavy in their um, um, importance of the, of the white. And so there is a, a trend to 
uh, leave the white uh, to um, uh, replace it with uh, neutral colors like gray tones, uh, beige tones, and so on. But there are uh, in, in another trend uh, that uh, um, we can see both in interiors and in exteriors in reality, that is that one of uh, a, a new use of colors. Uh, of course, there are these trends, there were these trends in uh, the whole history, even in the age of the early uh, building of the modern movement. But uh, uh, we can see that uh, um, in the last decades, and, and, and we have seen uh, these trends of colors against the white, uh, even uh, in the, the second half of the 20th century, we can think, for example, in the 80s, uh, uh, the explosion of colors when uh, all the, the TVs were in colors, all the, um, the, the, the magazines were in colors, and so this explosion of colors, and so it, it became, it became uh, a lot uh, more important, the use of colors. In the last um, decade, we can see these three trends, uh, the chromatism, so a renewed use of chromatism as a, elements uh, characterizing architecture, both in interior and in exterior, uh, indoor and outdoor. And then um, a, um, a, a new glam, so a, um, a trend to, to be glam with, uh, um, with surfaces, but making a much more important to materiality than to uh, color paints. And then uh, to this last uh, trend that we, we, have, we have observed, that is uh, the, we have called the emotional tech. So the use of lighting technologies that we have seen in ex exterior and even in interior. There is a project that we have seen, uh, uh, that we have uh, shown uh, of uh, um, uh, the corridors of uh, an uh, hospital in Rome. In, that was uh, re renovated uh, in recent year with uh, this particular use of light to uh, characterize the space and to make color in the space just with uh, lighting technologies. And we, we can say that now we are living in a shock, a shock that is uh, that one of, uh, um, of this pandemic crisis of COVID. And we have seen that uh, in, uh, um, in uh, all the shock uh, uh, of, uh, um, of, of the last centuries, like uh, the, the end of the, 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 the Second World War or the end of the First World War, make uh, a, a change in, uh, a, in a drastic change in, uh, in trends about colors, about uh, uh, design, about fashion and so on. Uh, and uh, um, so uh, it is possible that the cycle of colors that uh, we can analyze uh, uh, can change even now and cannot be, um, can go in the same direction uh, that we have seen, uh, that we could analyze without this uh, um, pandemic crisis that we are living. But uh, we can uh, see by now that this trend of, uh, um, uh, sort of emotional tech and the use of technologies for colorizing is something that uh, is, uh, um, is still actual and so um, can be considered that the idea of uh, white surfaces um, as perfect uh, um, uh, of architecture, interior and uh, exterior of architecture as um, expression of poor form uh, with uh, white uh, walls uh, can be considered, can remain uh, something uh, as a, a perfect uh, um, shape uh, to be colorized with these technologies. Of course, it can be a trend, uh, it can be um, focalized in the next years, and we will see. We will see it interesting, so much more universal to white, like a base uh, form and uh, more digital um, uh, turn uh, to all the others. I, uh, Matri, had, Matri had raised her hand. Matri, you still have a question? Yes. Yeah, uh, you guys mentioned uh, both the representation of, of white in nature and our perception of, you know, like uh, white in nature and also 
the influence of like Antarctica and our perception of white. And so I'm wondering if you can speak a little bit more to how our perception of white might shift as global warming continues to get worse and polar regions are, are drastically changing. What does that look like for our, our perception of white as we lose more and more ice? Perhaps more dramatic. And uh, about this is to uh, uh, about this is uh, uh, environment of uh, Oliver Ellison, who is originally from uh, Ireland, but of course all these extreme uh, nature problems and so on, they are very far away. We are not connected. We solely we, we only know about like a, a, about a dream and. Uh, our impressions it's, it's, it's something like what white bears in the zoo it, it doesn't work and that's why uh, white can be dramatized wait when we mix it with the uh, other associations with the Greenpeace with the, for example all these problems not about uh, uh, global warming but even for example with a uh, uh, ecological um, ecological questions uh, about fur, about murdering uh, the animal of the north so with the white fur and so on and so on. Like all these special, I, I forgot it, all these huge, huge, huge uh, fluffy animals, uh, very little and so on. Uh, uh, they are used uh, to, to make um, beautiful fur and so on. So uh, I, I think it, it can be yet very dramatized and uh, it, it's, it's, it's very important aspect too. Thank you, it's very interesting. And I think that even the the, the accent uh, of the Antarctic uh, and uh, of the um, of, of, of the um, reference uh, to the Arctic and Antarctic uh, um, landscape uh, uh, in some uh, installation, uh, in some uh, temporary architectures, uh, in some even real architecture, uh, or, or in some uh, um, site-specific art project, uh, as we've seen in uh, for, as the case of the Antarctic Biennale, uh, have uh, a um, new uh, dramatic accent uh, with the uh, consideration of the, um, the global warming uh, and, uh, and the, the reducing of, of, of the, the polar ices and so on. So uh, these uh, references, this uh, uh, interest uh, uh, for the site specific uh, in uh, in Antarctic, in this extreme uh, um, extreme environment, uh, so far away, uh, and but uh, uh, in which uh, we we can see the the most dramatic one some of the most dramatic effect of the of the global warming uh, is uh, um, something uh, um, related uh, is something that uh, has. Uh, in, even in importance of art uh, to, um, to 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 carry this uh, to carry on this uh, um, this, uh, um, this this problem and this uh, uh, ecolo ecological uh, um, ecological uh, um, uh, yeah. tent, yes I even would go a little bit further Marjorie if you think of all the movements now i mean in a way the green party lost a little bit its color for the green party they become more like many colors if you think of the yellow jackets in france if you think of the black people closed i mean not like the black protestant uh, protesters in in america but like in asia how they were using the social media as a forms of of, of mass communication and then uniting in a color I mean, that's what happened in the sports, you know, like when the Ducks play, everybody was wearing yellow or green or so. And this is now taking much more over into other fields. I have just two small, small comments like uh, for, for um, Laurel. I also had it like, Laurel, we will touch that also a little bit later. Le Corbusier, like they were white outside, but they were very colorful inside. He only has one white building and all the others. And by the way, the name Weissenhof in Stuttgart only came because the farmer was called Weiss, like white. It didn't come from the color. So I, I actually think that it was the reverse way a little bit, like there was a name and it was associated with a color. 
and then it became part of the movement. So that's the power of color. Then for Erica, I wanted to say, when we talk about the white as the cleanliness, we should not forget, or we may not forget that the white is a pigment too, that has to be added because white in itself doesn't, I don't know if it exists in nature, it's more ivory. I mean, even the polar bears are not white, white. You know, like they are camouflage, like it's always a camouflage in color. It's like the black is not, I don't know, it's not really, there's no, no black, no 100% black, and there's no 100%, I don't know, white. It's always a synthetic color, isn't it? I, I, I thought about that quite a bit, and then, um, I was wondering, and that brings me now to Marjorie, like with this new movement of mm. like finding a language for climate change, there's no visual language yet for climate change. Ah, oh, yeah. And I thought maybe it's, it is, I, I see that in exhibition design, when I go in exhibition stands now, and I used to work for the car industry, and in the 80s, they were all silver. Then 10 years ago or five years ago, it was the first time that a German car company after 50 years of war ending, they were allowed to produce brown cars because the brown colors are the Nazis. So they were not allowed to use brown cars. And now everybody is selling white cars because in terms of COVID and dangerous or insecure times, they want to have the most neutral color to sell the car again. But the spaces around them, as uh, we heard in our talk, they are colorful because the light is so colorful now. With the RGB light, we can change light colors and so on. And I always thought, when will that jump over? to the environmental movement. I can imagine that the environmental movement will, will not have a color, but many colors. I don't know, that's just a thought. You're the specialist on white. Uh, about environment colors, uh, yeah, there is absolutely a special, uh, special talks of, of perception of, of all of these. And uh, not, not yet, not yet, but, but I agree that today our cliche about white uh, is um, in reality much more difficult to describe. It's much more a complex uh, phenomenon because it's not white. It's different. Yeah, it's like the wedding dress, I thought. I was so glad that you showed that example. You see so many other colored wedding dresses now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, and this is interesting too. Uh, uh, it's, it's clear that uh, white uh, color for wedding dress exists, but uh, in last collections, uh, it, it's much more and more uh, something like off so called off white colors. Okay. And uh, of course, it depends. For example, a wedding dress in China is red dress, it's not white. Mm -hmm. It's only Europe tradition, it's much more Europe, Russian, American tradition. American. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it, it's very, it's very depends from the context. But in any way, if we see and we, re we really see all, all today uh, something like the third ceremony of this, okay, celebrities, the fourth and so on, we see that uh, color can be changed and can be even white, but neutrals. Something like not absolutely chemical white, but something like very near, like beige, like rose, like uh, all these uh, all these other colors, all these neutrals, and it's very interesting because what to do with it uh, after something like to reuse because uh, uh, this problem uh, it's it's uh, it's a very old problem and uh, before in the 20th century our mothers uh, if they wanted to reuse it they they bought special colors for, for these, something I don't know, blue or others. And then they tried to change uh, this color of wedding dress 
in uh, in the handicraft way and today not today not it's something like to 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 reuse it and then use it in different cocktail parties or visiting theater and so on but it's 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 a it's a very interesting question yes i see the message uh, black wedding dresses have become somewhat trendy recently online too yes um if we see uh, different uh, collections of wedding uh, brands and so on, we see even this gothic influence. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, there are more of more uh, black, even if black uh, means uh, something something bad in our European, American and Russian culture. In other, uh, the, there is a little bit, it's different, yes? We, we, we must focus even on different, um, uh, n n different territories, not in, in the whole world. But yes, it, it's not so interesting yet. So all these, uh, uh, all these meanings of uh, innocence and so on, it's not so important today. Much more interesting is something like a recycle. I, I also think the food industry, the organic food industry has changed our perception also quite a bit. Like in terms of the off-white seems to be much more organic, much more good yes. than the hardcore white. And we will touch on, we have to wrap up now a little bit and we have not even done our short presentation yet, but I didn't want to disrupt you. So we will record them and send them to you if you like next yes, week. Yes. But um, I, uh, two things. Firstly, what you just did on white, we can do nearly on every color now the red and the blue and so on, the symbolism of it. The white, I do think, is still one of the most interesting ones. So I was very glad that you did that inaugurational lecture here. Thank you so much. Thank and you. we will pretty much touch base on each subject. Even we will go in week number eight into color and dance because a lot of companies now use, like Pina Bausch use or Rosas, they, they use the colors now for the dance. Yeah, yeah. So we we can keep you posted, or we can share with you at the end our color portfolios. Yes, yes, it's very interesting. I agree. I I love very uh, contemporary dance, even uh, all these projects of roses that now we're alive, thanks God, <laughs> and of course Pina Bausch. Yes, it's it's very interesting idea to to make a little research um, in this performance we too. We will do at the end, every student will have a color portfolio. We do a lot of small exercises and I don't know if the students allow it, but I'm, we invite you already as our reviewer for the final review week or week 10 or so, or if you'd like to see them, you can see our color portfolios at the end where yeah. we touch base on each of the subjects that was in your lecture. Okay, it's very interesting. We just close our videos and then the microphone. Oh, yeah, yeah, but you can also say something. I mean, we haven't set up a protocol here. You see, I'm stumbling too. It's, it's interesting for us, of course. Oh, yeah. uh, just one, just one, uh, one minute. I, I'm, I tried this, uh, I catch this uh, book. Uh, if you're interested about all these ideas of EJ and Equite and so on, there is a part uh, in the book, Objects of Desire of Ogean 40 about the white that is very very hygienic now why it's so hygienic how it was started yeah, I, in the 19th century all these all these discourse about soap yeah if you could send us the title of the book we have it <laughs> like we also had white dresses and white walls we ha i had no access to it the only article that i had was the chromophobia I and the obviously one so, but I have a big reading list for everybody at the end. I read it pretty much, and I'm happy to share the syllabus with you too. I put everything in that I knew that could be interesting for you in your lifetime. So, yes, we yes. will add that too. Okay, thank you.